So once upon a time, there was a plan created within the CIA. It was a covert operation initiated during the early Cold War years to influence the media and disseminate propaganda. The goal was to sway public opinion and counter Soviet influence by controlling the flow of information. In a nutshell, folks, their intention was to control what you thought was good and what you thought was bad. If there is one video you should watch in these hours, it's this one. Because this video is intended to help you peer through the veil, to once again understand the world that has been created for your mind. It influences your decisions. It conjures theories and conversations. It propels agendas and public opinion. It creates hatred and opposition. And it controls who you like and who you don't. The US government was well aware of the power of media in shaping public perception and controlling narratives, both domestically and internationally. Do you think they ever stop? Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet everyday exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch tone essentials Pure Body Extra Colloidal Zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy to use spray so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of Zeolite today. Because now is the time to live your best life. There are a few varying numbers out there, but there seems to be close to 5 billion social media users worldwide. And because we can't trust the news, our governments and its agencies, we can't trust food and drug advertisements. So social media has become a necessity. Many people rely on platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to stay updated on what's going on in the world. Where the mainstream news and publications, people have learned to take anything they say with a grain of salt. Without social media, we would have a hard time getting the truth. Or maybe that time has passed because people on social media also have no problem lying to you. Now here's the problem with social media. It's the echo chamber. People are just talking and other people believe them. They hear people say things and then they just go with it. I believe Mockingbird goes back to 1947, a product of the CIA. The church committee, officially known as the United States Senate Select Committee to study governmental operations with respect to intelligence activities, was a committee chaired by Senator Frank Church. It was established in 1975 to investigate the activities of the CIA, FBI, NSA, and other intelligence agencies. The committee's investigations were driven by the growing concern over allegations of intelligence abuses, including domestic surveillance and covert operations. Throughout the early 1970s, whistleblowers came forward and raised concerns about the activities of U.S. intelligence agencies. In response, the U.S. Senate established the Church Committee in 1975, 
the committee investigated Operation Mockingbird and the issue of media manipulation by the CIA. Now they gathered evidence that the CIA had recruited journalists, funded media organizations, and placed stories in the press to influence public opinion both domestically and internationally. The committee revealed that the CIA had conducted numerous covert operations that were not properly overseen by Congress, some of which included attempts to assassinate foreign leaders and interfere in foreign governments. It also exposed domestic surveillance programs, including those conducted by the FBI that targeted American citizens and political groups without proper legal authorization. The CIA underwent internal reforms to address the issues raised by the committee, including efforts to limit its domestic activities and improve transparency and accountability. Post-church committee reforms established stricter oversight and legal constraints on intelligence agencies to prevent abuses similar to those seen in Operation Mockingbird. But in the digital age, the focus has shifted to online platforms. Intelligence agencies now monitor and sometimes engage with social media to counter disinformation and influence public opinion. Now, one of the reasons Operation Mockingbird was put in place was because no one at the time had a good understanding of the CIA. And so what we knew about the CIA came from movies and television shows the news. And so the CIA wanted to shape the public opinion about them as some type of secret agency of superheroes. So in the digital age, social media and other digital platforms have become the go-to source for information. It's the place people tend to gather for public discourse and several influence operations. So the intelligence agencies have now adapted using various methods to monitor and engage with these platforms to counter disinformation and influence the minds of the people. They monitor comments, likes, how often something is shared, everything. And even when they don't store all this information in one place, they have access to it. Let's keep in mind that social media in today's landscape is a very unforgiving place. If a person posts something that seems just a little off, the whole world has to comment on it and give their take. The person is shamed, humbled, made a meme of, and dragged through the mud on the way to the gallows. Intelligence agencies collect all this data from social media platforms to monitor trends, to detect threats, to gather intelligence on their adversaries. They use advanced algorithms and machine learning techniques to analyze social media content, identify patterns, to predict potential security threats. Call it the IAAI, Intelligence Agency Artificial Intelligence. They use what's called open source intelligence, which involves gathering publicly available information. So they'll use the internet, websites, blogs, forums, and other online content, newspapers, magazines, television, and radio broadcasts. They'll go on to platforms like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. There are government publications, databases, patents, and legal documents. They have access to research papers, journals, conference proceedings, maps, satellite images, geolocation data, market reports, financial filings, and business directories. Everything we have access to and then some. Now what they will also do is use various tools to identify disinformation campaigns. You know, they'll run their fact-checking organizations and the development of AI tools helps debunk false information and provide only the information that is allowed 
more than it is accurate to the public. And any organization affiliated with these agencies may run public awareness campaigns to educate citizens about the dangers of disinformation and how to recognize it. So they put you through this loop to correct you when you go off course, you see? How is that the mainstream media can still leverage social media to reach large audiences quickly? They are still right there up in front of everybody. These news stations still have the voice over most people. This is how psyops and information warfare tactics are adapted to digital platforms to influence the attitudes and behaviors of target audiences. And for a psyop, they don't really need a large platform, maybe just a few influencers, a few people that can plant seeds and infect others with ideas. We all know that bots and trolls exist, and some operations may involve deploying bots and troll networks to amplify messages so they can trick people into thinking there is some appearance of consensus or they'll just disrupt people on the other side. When social media platforms develop content moderation policies and tools to detect and remove harmful content, they often do so while consulting with intelligence agencies. There are mechanisms for threat sharing between intelligence agencies and tech companies so that they can quickly respond to threats. So we have some privacy concerns leading to debates about the balance between security and individual rights. We also know that a lot of people don't really care about that as they expose themselves. They get online and they let the whole world know their business. They tell on themselves and then later when it's brought up in the future, they seem to have forgotten some posts they made years ago that some internet detective dug out of their online closet. There's election interference. They've been using platforms for countering foreign interference in elections to stop people from influencing election outcomes. Social media is used to track and counter terrorist propaganda and recruitment efforts with several agencies working to disrupt these networks. Health misinformation. During the pandemic, intelligence agencies were combating health misinformation. These are the things that they consider their main threats when it comes to social media. Now, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning for real-time analysis and when information is posted that they don't like, they'll be able to identify it and take it down faster and faster. People are going to find ways to get themselves in trouble with AI and the government is going to use these AI systems to seek out, capture, and sometimes destroy. We've seen more than enough hypothetical and simulated outcomes to AI becoming too powerful. The Matrix or Terminator scenarios are probably among the worst case scenarios, but we still constantly hand over that power and authority. They're going to coordinate their efforts across multiple platforms. Well, they're already doing that up until they all become one. Collaboration between the government and tech industry will continue to evolve, focusing on shared strategies and technologies to address complex digital threats to combat these so-called threats. The shift to social media and digital platforms has transformed the landscape of intelligence operations, introducing new methods and challenges for monitoring, countering disinformation, and influencing public opinion while we hear many stories and many lies. The only way to see a glimpse of the truth is using discernment. Not a very profound message of advice, but it's amazing what you'll learn just by simply taking a second look. It is something you want the next generation to learn from us or 
the machine teaches them. Well, that's all for now, folks, and there is more to come. There is a video recommendation up on the screen and in the description box and pinned comment below. Please press the thumbs up button on your way out. And until next time, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.